Another cannabis company has made its debut on the public market in Canada. Cheddar reporter Chloe Aiello is with Steve D'Angelo, co-founder of Harborside, to find out more about the journey from a nonprofit to a public company. Chloe, take it away. Thanks, guys. Steve, thanks so much for joining us in this exciting and busy week for you. Your company that you co-founded, Harborside, just went public on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Now, it started off as a nonprofit. Can you talk a little bit about what you see the legacy being and how you intend to ensure that that stays put now that it's a publicly traded company? Mm -hmm. Well, can't, uh, Harborside started as a social activist organization. We were one of the first six licensed cannabis businesses in the country. And now we are, with this merger, uh, seven retail stores, 200,000 square feet of cultivation facility, 250 employees, two different brands. But what's going to stay the same are the values that Harborside exemplifies. And those values were taught to us by the plant. Uh, generosity, fairness, diversity, sustainability. Great. Um, and so speaking of social activism, you have a new initiative that you're working on, The Last Prisoner Project, that it aims to ensure that people who are incarcerated for cannabis-related convictions are released from jail. That seems like a tall order. How do you intend to accomplish that? Well, I intend to accomplish that by going to the new cannabis industry and other people who have a heart and asking them how it would feel to them if they were sitting in a prison cell looking out and watching people build intergenerational wealth, billions of dollars, uh, for doing exactly the same thing that they're in prison for. Uh, and their families are suffering with no breadwinner. So the idea, very simple, uh, we want to get every single cannabis prisoner in the world out. And you're working with companies in the industry to do that? We are. We've received a huge amount of support from, from the industry um, and companies whose names you would recognize. I'm not going to announce them yet, okay. but, but the response is, has really been wonderful. I can't think of one person who's said no. And so we will use clemency petitions. We will use uh, retrial, resentencing, expungement, um, and we will just start trying to get out as many people as we can, and we'll keep on working until we get down to our very last prisoner. <laughs> So you're still very early stages. Earlier this week, you didn't have a website, but I saw early this morning you do now, uh, but you're in fundraising. Do you know how much you're looking to raise and what you intend to do with that funding? Well, we're trying to raise $100,000 just for our seed money so that we can actually get to a launch. And then we will be having a series of fundraising events that will happen this summer and through next year. Uh, we are still you know, really developing uh, the plan, so you, you've got an early, an early mention of it, but I'm, I'm really proud to say that Harborside uh, is one of the two largest donors to the project, and the D'Angelo Family Trust was the first donor to the project. So this actually fits really well in with the national conversation right now. As legalization sweeps the country, we're having more conversations about expungement, more conversations about equity programs. But there have also been criticisms too, underfunding, understaffing, uh, slowdowns. What is your assessment of the progress that's being made? Well, you know, we are trying to do something that's very important. Uh, we're creating a new industry, and we want that industry to look different than all of the other industries. We want it to be more diverse and more fair. And so there have been a number of efforts to make that happen. Uh, organizations have been created. Oakland became the first city in the United States to actually encode this equity thinking into the licensing and regulation program. That was driven forward uh, a lot by an organization called the Hood Incubator, who is another group uh, that we support. Um, it's a work in progress. Uh, trying to unroll something as deeply entrenched in America as, as racism uh, requires a big push. So Oakland has started on it. Other cities have started on it. We don't quite have everything perfectly right yet, but the important thing is the intention to create not just a new industry, but a new kind of industry. And turning to Illinois specifically, so Governor Pritzker has touted the legalization effort as the most progressive, the most equity-centric so far. Uh, how do you think it stacks up? Well, I haven't uh, dug deeply into the equity provisions of the Illinois uh, regulations mm -hmm. because I was really upset about another one of the uh, provisions of the law, and I've been focusing on that, where uh, they have banned uh, people from actually being able to grow their own cannabis in their own home, in their own garden, uh, which I think is uh, really critically important, right, because 
There's many people who can benefit from cannabis, who need cannabis, who just can't afford to go into a dispensary and pay the amount of money that legal dispensaries charge.